How's it going guys? As you know, uh, on October 11th, Japan's finally lifting its ban on foreign tourists. So I thought it'd be a great idea before all the tourists come to go to Kyoto and explore all the tourist attractions uh, when it's like not filled with people. Uh, so that's where I am right now. I'm in Kyoto and we're gonna, and I'm gonna be here for three days, three days. And we're gonna explore the entire city, uh, hopefully without sea and mountains of tourists so uh, let's go first things first we still gotta rent our bike <laughs> all right uh, now we got our bike let's explore Kyoto let's see what they got to offer All right, we're about halfway to our first destination, but I just had to stop and check out the view for this. I mean, we've had seaside views before, but I think this is somehow a little more romantic. Anyways, that's cool, but uh, let's get right back on the bike. Oh, thank you. So right now we're at Kyo Mizudera. It's an old Japanese uh, Buddhist temple with some of the amazing views. Located on a bit of a valley, a bit of a hill. And it's one of the most, Kyoto's like 13 most uh, protective and historical sites, so uh, let's check it out. <laughs> All right, so right now we're at the base of the base of all the temples, I guess. So it's gonna be a steady climb with uh, views of uh, these temples all throughout. So uh, let's start this small little exercise hike. <laughs> I think I can kind of see why this is a pretty big tourist attraction because the views are just gorgeous. So up above are all these amazing temples and down to the side you get the amazing view of the entire Kyoto city. It's pretty cool. I will say, so far this place has been pretty good. I came at around 7 o'clock, so it's a bit early for all the shops and the tourist things to be open, which I think is probably for the better. But I do like like all the amazing views this place has. Like, you can see all of Kyoto and like the Kyoto Tower as well. Like, I do recommend that you come early so you can get some great views and not be like shoulder to shoulder to people. But yeah, there's more to this, so let's check it out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh my god, they have monkeys here. Let's go. So it looks like even heading down Kyo Mizudera is like a pretty fun thing because uh, you can even have great views of the, of the pagodas themselves just by walking down the hill. You get a different angle of how great and big these shrines are. Looking from the base of the temple, this place looks actually massive. Check out how many like structures it takes to prop up this whole temple on this mountainside. Well, aren't I happy I came here early. Turns out like half an hour later, this place is packed with people, <laughs> as you'd expect. So I guess it wasn't all bad that all the shops were closed. <laughs> There's so many kids here. <laughs> all right, I didn't want to film it because there were like a lot of people, a lot of people and a lot of kids, but yeah, I'm glad we came super early or else like it'd be impossible to get any of the shots that we did this, this morning because uh, it'd be packed. So if you do try to come here, uh, yeah, get here at like, at like sunrise. <laughs> So that way you can get you can like get those picture perfect shots that you want. But anyways, now that we're done here, we're gonna head to our next spot. That's about 10 minutes away, so I'll see you in a bit. All right, off to our next destination. Let's go. I don't know, I don't know if you see this, but like a train's about to go by and like the, the things came down, it's like, oh my God, this is... Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have to say one thing I like about Kyoto is like, it just feels like a blast from the past. It, you have the great like old pagodas and then like neighborhoods like this. Hmm. It's like this place hasn't changed since like the 70s. It's very calm and relaxing. But anyways, back on the road. So here we are at the Fushimi Inari Taisha, where, the, where this shrine is built at the base of the mountain of Inari. So this place is built for the Shinto god of rice and uh, yeah, for a good harvest. And um, they say that foxes appear here a lot. So, uh, so hopefully we get to see a fox today. So uh, let's see what this place got. All right, we're about to begin the summit uh, up the uh, Inari Mountain. So let's hope we don't run out of breath and like die on the way up. So let's go. All right, behind me are the famous Inari Taisha gates. So uh, let's head through there now. I hope it's as beautiful and aesthetic as I think it would be. All right, we just made it to the first plateau. Uh, I think there's like a few more to go. Uh, 
and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's not really too much else. There's a snacks and rest area, but other than that, um, there's not much. So let's let's head on to the next summit. Apparently, you can touch this tree for good luck, so... Alright, so we're at another checkpoint. I think this might be the second plateau, but we've got more to go. But, if we're lucky, might get to see some monkeys and some pigs. All right, let's go. All right, so here's where the mountain climb actually starts. So let's see if I have enough stamina to keep up with this big guy. Alright, we're about halfway up. Uh, we're about halfway up the mountain. We're almost near the summit, so uh, we get to see some great views of Kyoto again. Hopefully this time it's a bit different from uh, Kiyomizudera. So let's go. Alright, we just made it to one of the checkpoints. I'm a bit out of the breath, but the views more than make up for. So check it out. All right, break over. Let's keep climbing. All right, so we finally made it to the halfway point. It's probably my last point because I'm gonna start heading down now. But on the map, it said this had the best views. So, and I do agree, the last few views have been pretty nice, but check this last one out. Alright, we're working on a nice sweat. Got some views. Climbed up a mountain. Let's start our, let's start our trek down. Alright, we're back at the bike. Uh, I couldn't I didn't film most of the way down because it was kind of repetitive and also I bumped into another foreigner. We just talked all the way on the way down, so uh, yeah, I didn't want to force the camera in his face, but uh, so I didn't record most of it. But now that we're done at uh, Fushimi Inari, uh, let's go to our next place. All right, let's hit the road. As you see on this side, that's the castle. So let's see what's behind these secret mysterious doors. Here we are at the historic ground of Nijo Castle. It was built in 1603 as the home of Takogawa Iyoasu, who was the first shogun of the Edo period. So behind me, over there is the living quarters of the emperor. Uh, they wouldn't let me film inside, but uh, yeah, it was really nice to see in there. It had like 
had like mannequins that displayed like day-to-day -day life in the palace uh yeah but uh unfortunately they didn't let us film so i guess that sucks <laughs> so let's go explore some more of this place so we're entering the honmaru garden uh the imperial garden so let's see what they got Yeah, so right now we're here. Uh, this was just the living quarters that I could not show you. That was the garden we were just at, and now we're gonna go through another garden, the base of a tower, and all the way back down here, and then we're done. So let's go! So here we are at the base of the tower keep. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to uh, be like a watchtower for like invaders. I think it's more like a scenic, scenic view to like overlook the city. All right, now we're a bit of a crossroad. Instead of going the normal route of the garden, we're going to instead go to the palm tree globe and the cherry tree orchard. Let's go. Let's see some cherry trees. Okay, I guess I was the idiot. I was expecting there to be like actual things like blooming, but it's like fall, so like everything's just dead. <laughs> so I guess I'm the dumbass here. All right, the cherry tree orchard and the plum tree grove end up just being one big loop around. So now that we're back, let's go to the garden. So yeah, that was the Nichijo Castle. I think that was probably my favorite spot of the three so far. Uh, you know, we got a little culture, we got a little history, we got to see some nice views, and, it, and more importantly, it was all contained in like one generally small area. Whereas the other two, I had to like walk, the, walk to the depths of the earth to like find all the nooks and crannies. And you know, this was a pretty short visit. So uh, it does cost $8, so even though it is a bit expensive. I still do recommend you to come check it out. All right, now that we're now that we're done with the castle, let's head on to the next place. It's going to be just as imperial as this place, just to give you a hint. All right, off to the next location we go. So right now we've just arrived at the Heian Shrine. Uh, this shrine was built in like the early 1900s. It was built for the it was built for the 11,000th uh, anniversary of Kyoto, and it was like dedicated to all the f emperors that came before it. Uh, so again, very cultural, very ancient, like the last place. So uh, let's check it out. Oh, and uh, the the reason why it's called Heian Shrine is because Heian was the former name of Kyoto but before all that I am pretty hungry and uh, it's about noon and uh, I need to grab some lunch so I'm gonna show you what a Japanese convenience store looks like today so let's check it out all right so here's what I got for lunch mm, a ramen it's not the greatest but uh, uh, they cleared out everything else so this is the only like food left for me to have and and there's another sports drink and we bought this all at Family Mart. Uh, Family Mart's not my favorite. Uh, I prefer Lawson's over Family Mart, but you know, this will have to do for now. So hopefully this doesn't taste too bad. Uh, unlike like last time when we went 
to have that ramen at the onsen. That was terrible. I think this will be slightly better, but we'll see. So see you in a bit. All right, now that the meal's finished, uh, let's go check out this semi, this relatively new shrine. Oh, and one more thing that sucks about uh, Japan. You have nowhere to throw your trash. There's just no garbage bins anywhere. So I just gotta carry this around like an idiot until I hopefully find one soon. So let's check out this new shrine. You know, I thought like, you know, street side sellers would be semi-legal, but it seems like they're just sort of just having a field day here selling whatever they like. Especially right in front of a shrine. Like, I thought it'd be like a sacred place, but uh, I guess it's okay here. Alright, so we're about to enter this magical, mythical garden of the 19th century, so let's see what it has. <laughs> All right, now we're just about to walk across this dodgy little road. Let's hope I don't slip and fall. That park was surprisingly nice. Like, well, at, at first I was I wasn't sure if like this is worth the six dollars, but then when I saw the ponds, like the body of waters, I'm like, wow, this looks amazing. And then they added the old houses. I'm like, damn, this is some 19th century technology. Let's go. Let's make a quick prayer in the building behind me, and then we'll head on back on the road. All right, back on the bike and let's go to our next destination. Let's go. So right now we've just arrived at the Ginkakujin, the silver pavilion. It's a Zen, it's a Zen temple garden shrine at like the Eastern side of Kyoto. It was a retirement home for a shogun, and uh, it's supposed to be like a replica of the Kinkakujin, the Golden Temple. So let's check it out and see how silver this place is. Holy, this is a big place. It's gonna take a while for us to explore all this. So, let's go. Well, I guess it's time for me to try my luck. <laughs> well, so much for that.
All right, we made it to the first plateau, first check, checkpoint, and this is the view that we see. That over there, if you can see it, is the King Kakujin, the silver building. And uh, yeah, I guess tomorrow we'll see if it's actually like a replica of this uh, gold, gold building. Anyways, let's keep on going. So yeah, that was the King Kakujin, uh, the silver, the silver temple, the silver pavilion actually. Uh, sorry I couldn't get more footage. The place was just uh, rammed with people. Like I couldn't really get too many good shots because then it'd just be like, oh, more people, more people. So we're gonna go to one more place before we end off the day. So we've been to a lot of places. I think we have like a few more to go. So let's pick up the pace and hopefully we can make it to all of them in time before they all close. Okay, let's go. Alright, uh, back on the bike, let's head to our last location before we end off the day. So the place I want to take you guys, I actually showed up too late and they wouldn't let me in the door. Uh, so yeah, I instead just end up returning the bike and I'm gonna head home and take a shower. But I will take you guys to another place that I did originally plan to take you yesterday, but since we couldn't squeeze it in today, I might as well do that activity today. So I'm gonna take a shower and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so right now we're at the Kyoto Tower. Uh, so I especially waited for a night to do this so we could see the night skyline. So let's check it out. At the end of the day, it's calm and relaxing to be above the city and see the skyline. Today was a roller coaster of a day. We went to Kiyomizudera, Fushiminari, Ijo Castle, Heian Shrine, and Ginkakuji, the Silver Pavilion. We mostly explored the west and middle side of Kyoto. Uh, feel free to use this video as an itinerary when you travel to Japan and come to Kyoto. Although I wouldn't follow it exactly because you'll definitely be tired like I am. And travel's not about the places you go, but the experiences you have. Like, I didn't know today I'd make a friend on top of Fushimi Nari. So plan your own adventure, and see where that leads you. As you can probably see behind me, this place is packed with people. So uh, yeah, I got some quick, I got some shots, and I'm gonna head to get, get the heck out of here because uh, I'm scared the CO2 is gonna be a little too high in this very, very small enclosed space. Let me just quickly show you what I mean. It's a lot of heads. It's a lot of heads in a very small area. So yeah, that was the Kyoto Tower. There was a lot of people up there. It was really crowded. It was really hot. I couldn't get too many shots. But uh, yeah, it was nice to see the night view. And if you look closely, um, you could some of the views uh, that I took uh, were some of the places that we actually visited. But yeah, that's all I have for you today. I'm absolutely tired. Uh, my legs are so sore. Uh, I'm gonna head off to bed, but I'll see you guys tomorrow uh, for day two of Kyoto. So see you guys tomorrow morning.